Hey, how's it going? My name's Ted. I'm going to show you how to uh, pull your hard drive out, put it in another computer. Say uh, your hard drive's crashed, you want to recover your data. First thing you want to be sure is uh, it really is your hard drive. It could be your power supply. Uh, I'll show you how to test that out in a later video. It could even be your power switch, motherboard. But typically, you'll know that it's your, your uh, hard drive. So you had a power outage in your middle of something, then um, try and boot up your computer. You know, it powers on, but it doesn't really do anything. It just goes to a blue screen. Uh, tells you that there's something wrong with your hard drive. You know, just, you never things like that. But if you want to figure it out, you, know, you can always uh, take out your power supply, put another one in, see if that's the case. But only if you have an extra one sitting around, don't go out and buy one. You know, wrap it back because it could be fine. There's little testers you can get on eBay for like $4. No problem. But anyway, down to business, I'm going to show you first, you need to ground yourself before you put your hands in there because you could destroy your motherboard. So your body can carry a static charge, like you're walking across carpet or something like that. Um, it also helps you have an anti-static uh, bracelet. Uh, you can pick up one at Best Buy for just a few bucks. Um, first, ground yourself. Just touch the case. You know, just put your hands on it. Just uh, discharge any electrical you know, electricity in your body. And uh, so your hard drive... So this computer is kind of a mess. I just threw it together for my kids so they can watch movies in the bedroom so my wife and I can watch TV without interruption. Okay. You know, you got all these this mess of power cords in here, but there's two cords that are attached to your hard drive. You've got your power cord right here, and then there's the gray IDE cable right here. It's just a big, fat gray cable. If you have a SATA drive, uh, it's just a... Normally it's a red cord, sometimes black, but normally they're red. And it's no wider than your pinky finger. There's pictures on my page, uh, Auburn Custom PC on Facebook. It shows you the difference between the two drives, so you know what you're messing with. First, go ahead and unplug it while it's still screwed in. It'll come out easier that way. These uh, these power uh, hookups right here, they're uh, sometimes they're kind of difficult to pull out. So you want to make sure that it's still screwed in before you mess with it, because you can yank the hard drive out and actually damage it mechanically. Then you've got a real problem that costs a lot of money, uh, anywhere up to like you know four or five hundred dollars, sometimes a thousand. It depends on just how desperate you are to get your data back. And there's still no guarantee that they can even get it off there. Some mechanical failure. It's pretty much just dead. They have to go in there and replace the the arms on it, pull the discs out. Sometimes they can put it in another computer, another hard drive. But logical failure. It's much easier to get your data off. So now that it's unplugged. You know, it's got this mess of cords around here, so it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Normally, I would have the computer laying on its side so I can get in there and do what I need to do and not really worry about it. But I've got it standing up like this so you can see what I'm doing. So, next, you get your screwdriver out. Make sure you've got the right size bit because these screws, they come in all different shapes and forms. Usually, they're pretty standard ones that come with the computer, but there's a custom job or somebody owns a computer before you, you can have all kinds of mismatched screws in there, you just never know. So go in, uh, uh, okay, perfect example of some of these weird little screws I was just talking about. Uh, let's see. Yeah. This is kind of like, uh, you almost need an Allen wrench for these guys. I don't like these, but they will work for now. So typically you just need like a, a smaller little you know Phillips head screwdriver. I don't know if you can see that but little hex head in there. A little bit of a pain. But you got the right tools, no big deal. So normally there's uh, four screws that are holding these in place. Depends on what kind of case you have. I usually just put in the two because I mean it's in there pretty firmly with the two, and I usually change out these board or the hard drives pretty often on some of these computers. Just you know messing around, trying out new software, stuff like that. So be very gentle when you're taking it out. You don't want to knock it around or bump anything else in the computer. You could damage your a PCI card, and you can knock one of these video cards out of place or sound card. But this is your average uh, PETA hard drive. Attaches with uh, you know, the IDE cable. You can definitely tell it's PETA just by the pins right here. This is where the gray cable would attach. And if you look closely, you see there's one little pin missing right here. It's just to make sure that you always put the cable in the correct way. 
this is where your uh, power hooks into it and these are your jumpers this one right here is set up in a, a master position and most drives will have little directions on here just to show you the different settings uh, for the jumpers uh, when you uh, have a bad hard drive and you want to you know, get your data back you need to change these jumpers you want to change it from uh, master to slave you can just pop them right out with uh, your fingernail or if they're a little bit more difficult just get like a little pair of tweezers just be careful and if this thing falls on the floor you have a hard time finding especially if you have a a white floor so and you move it over here now it's in the slave position so you can uh, set it back up on a second computer and uh, download your software so you can start scanning this drive and get all your information back and you would put it back in just the way that I just took it out. First, you know, install it, screw it back in, and then uh, attach your ID the gray cable because it's further away. Then uh, your power supply. Then uh, I would do a second video, show you how to uh, go through BIOS, make sure it's detected, and make sure it's set up as a secondary slave drive or primary, whichever. Depends on your BIOS and how many other drives you have in there. Um, then uh, I'll do a walkthrough on uh, the software that I use. Um, I, the particular software that I use, it, it costs a hundred dollars for it. Uh, I'm just I'm, I'm partial to it. I, I like it. I don't have never had any problems with it. But there's a, a free uh, free software you can use. It's called PC Inspector File Recovery. It's free to download, free to use. You never have to pay anything for it. And uh, if you only have just the one computer and uh, you, you, know, you don't have another computer to load your drive into, you, uh, there's another program called Ultimate Boot CD for Windows. I'll show you how to use that in a later video as well. But anyway, don't forget, uh, PC Inspector File Recovery. I'll put a link uh, on with this uh, video. I'm going to put this up on YouTube and also on uh, the group on Facebook for anybody having these issues. If you have any questions, you know, just post my ball answer when I get to it. But anyway, you know, just put it back in. In your second computer. Make sure you line it up just right. Now you gotta be careful with these because sometimes when you're putting them in there, the moment you take your finger off of it, it's just gonna move all around in there and it might knock against something and be causing even more damage to your drive. So you want to make sure it's fixed in there good. If you, get, if you have like a solid state drive, you don't have to really worry about those because they can, there's no actual moving parts in it. It basically looks like a giant RAM module. Just a bunch of little chips in there. But these things, they have lots of moving parts in there and they're probably screwing up pretty easily. I mean, all hard drives fail. I mean, it's, there's no getting around it. They will fail on you eventually, so it's good to always just get into the habit of backing up your data so you don't have this problem. Now, I would have set this up on a different computer, but I've got both the other computers right now. They're both running some software that I plan on doing a later videos on to show you guys. One of them's running the uh, PCI inspector right now. It's doing a test on a different drive. Find some pretty interesting things on some of these old hard drives, I'll tell you. Some of them are pretty sick. All right. So now it's all set back up again. And I can power it up if I had the second. Make sure you, when you get this new software, do not put it on the drive that you want to get your data from because once once they crash, you do not want to use it ever again because the moment you try to open up something on there, it's going to start rewriting over data that you want to save. So make sure you save the file, uh, the PC inspector, on your primary drive that's already in the old the other computer. So that way, once it's all installed, you can immediately gain access to this. And uh, it's a really good program. Um, you can recover files that you accidentally deleted. Um, say if it didn't, if it didn't crash, but you know you accidentally deleted a file that pictures or you accidentally formatted something like that. You, know, you can recover deleted files. There's three different sections on it. Uh, one, the first one is recover deleted files. The second one is find lost data. That's if your hard drive actually crashed. But if your hard drive isn't even readable, there's another option on there. It's uh, to find uh, the lost drive. It'll search it out, find it, 
and then you can recover your data from there. It's pretty neat. And not bad for free too. So that's it for this this video. The second one I'll show you how to use the program, just do a quick walkthrough on it. And everything should be good. Alright, have a good one. Bye.